Good afternoon, everyone. Today I have with me um, Dr. Hanrahan, and he is with William Woods University. And I'm going to let him give you guys a little description. I know you wear many hats, um, Dr. Hanrahan. So what is your main role there at William Woods? Sure. My main role right now is I'm the, previously I was the director of the School of Education. And so those have been my last two uh, leadership roles here uh, at the university. And then I've always been in charge uh, of our physical and health education program uh, and working to certify uh, teachers in the state of Missouri uh, K through, in, in K through 12 physical and health education. Perfect. and. For the past handful of years, and um, we're approaching almost 10 years, you have now brought in mental health and substance use into the classroom to introduce it and raise an awareness with your um, students that are getting ready to go into the teaching workforce. And why did you do that? I was looking back on my own teaching career and ending up in a school um, that was a uh, uh, type of uh, working through a lot of issues um, that uh, involved uh, mental health, involved uh, uh, drug abuse in some situations. Um, it kind of dawned on me and the teachers that I was working with, the veteran teachers at the time, that was not something that we had a lot of education on. And so we had some, uh, and I think I ended up with a lot more than others. Uh, but when I was put in that situation um, if the first time, I, I really didn't feel that I had as much preparation as I would have liked. And I was learning a lot more on the fly. Uh, and I said, if I ever was going to work in a position where I would train uh, new teachers, uh, and I could just feel at that time, seven, eight years ago, that this was something that wasn't going away. It, it was going to be a snowballed effort. And uh, so because of that, um, I decided that I, I, I could teach them some of the more um, content heavier things like what are the body systems and stuff. I could get them to read that information. I could teach that in different ways uh, and not spend as much class time. But I, I felt that the mental health uh, and the substance of use and abuse was something that they were going to see way more on a daily basis and was something that I needed to make much more of an emphasis on uh, to, to help them as they got ready for their careers. So uh, that was a change we made about seven, eight years ago and uh, been sticking with it. And, and luckily that's worked out pretty well for us. Do you have any of your, let's say, like primary elementary students say, I'm never going to use this. Why does this apply to me? Maybe that's more middle school, high school. I get that one a lot more with the substance abuse, uh, but then I tell them a story uh, of when I was teaching elementary school and, and, and no, uh, no joke here, but one time I took a, a group out and we were running a mile uh, for a mile test and two students snuck off uh, behind a tree uh, and had marijuana, uh, you know, in the fifth grade. And so it, it's one of those things I tell that story and I've seen countless of other stories that I've heard from uh, that I worked with and, um, and taught with over time, uh, where it seems to me that this type of uh, behavior is getting younger and younger and younger. And so when I first started doing this about seven years, eight years ago, I did hear that a little bit when it revolved around substance abuse. Now, it seems to me that since it is happening earlier and earlier and it's becoming more mainstream, I'm really not being questioned about it at all. And in fact, they're asking for more, uh, which we were giving so much. Uh, they're even wanting more on top of that. And uh, so uh, that that's kind of been the biggest change I've seen since the seven and eight years we've been doing this. Well, as someone in the field, that makes me great, or that makes me feel great to hear that. Um, what are some of the biggest aha moments you've seen with your students when you talk about mental health and or substance use? I think one of the biggest things that they always ask a question on is where are we getting this information? You know, we, we hear so much. Uh, and I think that that's the biggest thing that students face today. It's not uh, the amount of information, uh, they're being inundated with it on a daily basis. Um, but one of the things that, that I'm seeing is them trying to figure out what is quality information, you know, what, what on Instagram is real, what's not real, you know, what on Facebook posts is real. So the biggest aha moment I have is when I teach them how to use 
the, um, y, um, uh, the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey or the YRBS, and they learn how to go to the CDC's website. They learn how to access that information. They get to look at that data for Missouri, uh, and then they compare it to their own um, kind of upbringing and some of the things that they were seeing. Uh, and that probably, I have an assignment that, that we always have done off of that. And you know, you've come in and spoke, Alicia, right after we've gotten done doing that. And their questions are deeper. Um, their reflections are deeper because they see just their own little um, uh, side of things. And then all of a sudden they, they see that and start hearing their classmates talk about their experiences. And it's kind of like for that first time, their eyes are open like, wow, I, I did not know that uh, people were doing drugs in the third or fourth grade. I, you know, I didn't know that there was a talk about um, uh, sex until, you know, before high school. You know, it's all of a sudden all these experiences that they may or may not have are just coming out um, and they're, they're seeing that differently. And I, I think to me that normally happens around our third uh, and fourth week of class. And to me, that really locks them in, engages them, and, and they start making more meaning to, wait, this really is important. It's not going to be something else uh, that they're just telling me I have to learn. Uh, this is real life. Yeah. And no matter how worldly or globally we think we think, once we see the information presented to us, we really do sometimes feel like that we are just in this little bubble and there all is all this other stuff going on around us that we didn't know about. I know that's how I was when I got into the field. So it was definitely an eye opener. Absolutely. And I know some of it. Go ahead. Well, I, I think too, you know, sometimes it, most of us get into the teaching field because, you know, we were good at education, you know, and we were the good students and, you know, some, and so all of a sudden when you're seeing that there's a whole nother world to that, uh, you know, that, that they not necessarily had seen before that uh, people uh, do things a little bit differently or had different upbringings uh, and maybe it wasn't as good as my upbringing. Um, all of a sudden that starts putting things in perspective. And, and when they start to figure that out, that as a teacher, I'm gonna have people from all walks of life. Uh, in some cases, that may be the first time they've ever really thought about it in that way. And so I think that just adds to it as well. That's true. Well, I appreciate as a practitioner in the field, what you do to bring that to your uh, teachers who are getting ready to go out. Um, I know the whole field appreciates that and hopefully um, your colleagues are jumping onto this bandwagon as well. Absolutely, I, I think I think it's made a big difference, and and I hear it a lot from those teachers too. So that it's a good thing. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Hanrahan, for joining me today and taking your time. I appreciate the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks. Have a good one. Uh huh. You too.